So welcome in everybody. Uh, I'm Faye from Wing Canvas, if we haven't met before. We're doing this a little bit differently today. We're gonna be on the stage. Uh, so if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. Today's workshop is going to be how to draw heads in difficult angles. And uh, thank you to XP Pen for uh, inviting Wing Canvas to this event and for the workshop. So uh, just a little bit about us. Um, we are, Wing Canvas is an online art school. You may have seen our YouTube channel and uh, we specialize in workshops in illustration uh, as well as animation. And today we're gonna be talking about how to draw heads in difficult angles. So this is a demo that I did in, a, in my figure drawing course. And uh, you can see this exercise took a very long time. It probably took about, oh, about two to three hours to complete with my students step by step. So we're not gonna be drawing all of these heads, but we will be drawing a few um, different poses. So let me show you the poses that we will be drawing together today. So I have sourced uh, some different photos of heads in difficult angles, and you can kind of see, you know, what makes a head angle difficult. Um, some, uh, sometimes the most difficult thing is, uh, you know, the, the POV. So the POV stands for point of view. You know, how are you looking at somebody? Are you looking up at them? Are you looking down at them? Are they looking up and down? Like sometimes you might have, uh, like in this case, this person is just, you know, not looking up or down, but our POV is like, we are looking up at them, right? So our eyes are like below them, right? In, in this, in this case, whereas, uh, in this example here, she is looking directly in front of her. Her head is not tilted up or down. However, we are looking down at her. So our eyes are like up here and we're looking down at her. Here, our eyes are below the person. And in this case, our eyes are above the person, right? So our POV makes a pose very challenging. Um, that's something to keep in mind. Like whenever you're drawing a face, it's not only how the face is tilted. So some things you might want to think about is like, you know, the tilt of the face itself. Like, is the face tilted? Um, is the face uh, looking up or looking down? So by tilt, I mean like, tilting this way, right? So for example, um, this would be a face straight up and down, whereas with a tilt, you know, it would kind of be like this, right? So the face is kind of tilting in one direction. Looking up and down would actually uh, be a different kind of tilt, right? That would be if a person is looking up, you might see the bottom of their chin like this, right? If you see the bottom of their chin, um, then you'd probably see the bottom of their nose, right? So their head would be tilting up um, or their head might be tilting down. So if their head is tilting down, you know, for example, with this person, right? Uh, you wouldn't really see any of the underside of the chin and you wouldn't see any of the underside of the nose. So is their head tilted sideways? Are they looking up or down? Um, and then your POV, right? So all of these things are really important for when you are uh, drawing a person. You need to know all of these things before you start the difficult angle. Otherwise, it gets really uh, confusing. Okay, so three things to keep in mind. POV, tilt, and are they looking up or down? 
Okay, so if you are drawing along with me, um, hopefully you can, you can either work from your own reference or you can draw along with me and uh, do your best. If you're a complete beginner, one of the easiest things you could do to study a face is to actually trace it. Um, and by tracing it, I don't actually mean tracing the facial features. I just mean tracing the ball and shield. So we talked about the ball and shield a little bit in the last workshop. Uh, so the way I construct a face is with a ball and the shield. So if you know what a shield looks like, right, kind of looks like this. And it would sit on top of that ball. Okay, so the ball and shield method is probably the uh, method that I prefer, um, just because it's it's very easy to draw heads in any orientation. So, for example, uh, with this one, you can kind of see the shield going this way, right? You can kind of see if I had to draw the shield, it's kind of like this. Right? So the shield on the side is curved. And uh, you can see like this, you're looking up at the shield, right? So your POV is below it. Right? I always draw like a little eye to remind myself that that's my POV. Uh, and then you can find the ball. So the ball can be different on different types of heads. So on most skulls, the ball is a little bit more oval. So it's not exactly round. Like you can see with this guy, right? It's actually more oval. It's more like that. <laughs> it's more like that. And then... If you look at the ball about, if you divide the ball, let's say into half like this, right? You can see that the ear fits into the bottom co corner, like the bottom quadrant, right? So this is really important because if you trace over a face, then you can find certain landmarks. So for example, you could find the, uh, the nose, you could find the nose, you could find the ear, right? Um, and then you can kind of find the where the eye starts. So you can find the mouth, right? And instead of drawing all of the features, what I tend to do is I just look for the triangles. I look for triangles. Because when you look for triangles, you start to see patterns, right? You start to see that the nose does this. You start to see that the mouth is also kind of like this shape, right? And you see that the eyes are also like this shape. And you can almost kind of see a face here. Um, I didn't draw them, you know, um, in, in any particular uh, order, but you can start to see a face just in the pattern of the triangles. So tracing a face really just helps you place certain things, right? And this guy's actually wearing glasses. And so the way I draw glasses is I kind of draw a, um, I kind of draw a flat box around the glasses just to kind of show me one plane, right? Or one corner. And then I draw this corner. So it's kind of turning like this, right? And then I can divide out the glasses. So for example, if the glasses are going slightly in perspective like this, then you can actually find the middle by doing that. And you can see that this section is a little bit wider than this section, right? And then that helps you find the middle of the glasses and then you can kind of draw in those circles in perspective. So that's a really easy way to place glasses on a head when you're analyzing face shapes. Um, the other triangle that you might see is the bottom of the chin. 
look at this triangle, right? So we've got this triangle here, we've got this one, we've got the eye, and we've got the nose, right? So they all are very similar in shape. <laughs> looks funny. It looks like I just graffitied on top of this guy's face. Um, but anyway, um, I definitely think like if you're a beginner, it's a, it's a lot easier to analyze face shapes by doing a little bit of a tracing exercise, right? And then if I turn off the reference picture, you can kind of see the analysis and the simplification of the head, right? It actually is simplified into very basic shapes. Um, you'll notice that the hair, the hair is also uh, its own shape and it's larger than the skull. So you never want to draw the, the oval or the circle or the ball. You never want to draw it right up to the hairline because hair has volume, right? So you want to make sure that the hair is larger than that ball, right? Okay, so I'm gonna turn off my reference picture. So if you wanted to uh, do a little bit of a tracing on top of your reference picture and then copy your tracing, that's one way you can do it, right? That's a really sort of simple way to translate your analysis into your drawing. Um, but if you're a little bit more advanced, then I suggest just drawing it and trying a freehand version. So I'm gonna create a new layer here. I'm gonna call this freehand. I'm gonna call this one tracing. All right, so let's try to redraw this. I'm just using a, um, like a pastel type of brush because I like the texture of it. Um, okay, so. I'm gonna first sketch out a ball and then the shield. So freehanding this Make sure that the shield has a little bit of a curve to it, right? So it looks a little bit more natural. Uh, you can find the jaw, connect it to the bottom of the shield, and then here you can see the bottom of the jaw, right? This triangle shape, which is really, really important. You can see it in the shadows over here. So if you wanna draw a triangle, you can do that, and then the neck, kind of connects this way. Uh, you can see, for example, his head um, doesn't really have a clear sort of um, connection between where that circle is and where his neck is. It's very smooth. But generally speaking, there is a distinct place where that neck connects, right? It's usually somewhere around there. And then the way the neck connects to the body, um, the rib cage would be down here. So his neck here looks really, really thick, right? It looks really, really thick. So it should actually come down a little bit more. And then we'll just kind of draw in the line of his shoulders. So I think it's important to sort of draw in the, um, the rib cage in addition to the head because a lot of people struggle with that connection, right? Um, so once you have that head drawn in, then you can start to put in the ear. The ear itself is not that important, but it's a really important landmark, right? So once you have that ear in, you'll start to see that the ear aligns with the nose, right? So the bottom of the ear aligns with the bottom of the nose, but you can see there's a little bit of a curve, right? <laughs> so 
So there's a little bit of a curve that goes up this way, right? And then that would be the bottom of my nose. And then you can kind of see the nose is on a bit of a tilt here, right? So I usually draw in the bottom of the nose first. And then I'll connect it. So it looks a little weird <laughs> here because it's behind his glasses. Um, and also like his face is in a, in a funny angle. So I may have to adjust some of my lines right now. I'm just kind of free handing it. Uh, in terms of his mouth, you know, I'm just going to focus on drawing the shape of his mouth. The weird thing, <coughs> sorry, the weird thing about mouths um, is that if you are looking at somebody from below, so I'm looking up at him right now, right? Uh, the the top curve of the mouth and the bottom curve of the mouth, they're both going to curve upwards a little bit, right? Because that's, that's because his chin is also curving up a little bit. So it makes the mouth shape very weird, right? It's not like this. It's more like this kind of shape. So that can be really uh, challenging to remember because, you know, <laughs> the curves of his mouth are always echoing the same curve of that POV. So if you're looking up at somebody, all of the curves are going to go this way, right? If you're looking down at somebody, all of your curves are going to be going the opposite way. Sorry guys, I'm a little bit sick, so I'm kind of losing my voice. Bear with me. <laughs> um, okay, so just like the bottom of the nose aligns with the bottom of the ear, the top of the ear aligns with the, it's, it's a gamble. It's usually between the eyebrow and the eye, right? So the older you are, the larger your ears, <coughs> sorry, the larger your ears are. So the older you are, the larger your ears become. So ears are a good tool to uh, measure proportions, but they're not always accurate. It depends on the age of the person. So here you can see the top of the ear aligns with the eyebrow or the corner of the glasses, right? So always look for those alignments to give you clues. So here I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna draw the top of the glasses because it's a very easy landmark. You can also kind of draw a straight line to find out where the corner of the glasses align with the mouth. And you can kind of see, okay, there's a little triangle here. There's a little triangle here. I got my angle correct. Okay. Um, you can also, so now I'm going to draw in the top of his glasses, right? Like this. So again, I'm just going to draw it. I can eyeball it here, but I kind of showed you how I would draw it in perspective. Right. So this one goes behind the nose. You can draw in his nostril if you like. Again, these are just, this is a very, very basic simplification of this pose. Okay. All right, so then next you want to draw in the eye and then you can try to find the uh, the placement of the eye so you can see that the eye, like you can't really see it uh, within the lens or within the frame of his glasses. It's actually a little bit behind it, right? So if you're eyeballing it, just draw in that triangle shape. like that. And then the eyebrow is actually behind his glasses. So you, you won't actually see it. Uh, I'm just going to round his glasses a little bit. 
Glasses are really hard. <laughs> I chose this pose um, because I know a lot of my students actually really struggle with glasses. Um, let me know in the chat if you struggle with glasses because it's one of the most challenging things uh, for a lot of beginners. But a very easy way to draw in the glasses is just to simplify it into a box, right? Okay, so I'm trying my best not to focus too much on detail here. I'm really just trying to um, focus on simplification uh, because really that is the key to easy drawings and um, not worrying so much about the details, right? Okay, so judging from my drawing, I can kind of see that my ear is probably a little bit too small. My jaw here is a, probably a little bit too long, right? So I can make some adjustments now um, according to what I see. It's always good to, <coughs> to notice these, uh, these adjustments and make them at the end. Um, when you see everything in context of each other. So context is super, super important, right? Because without context, you wouldn't actually know <laughs> if your proportions are wrong. So you kind of have to see everything together. Okay. So once I have in the, um, the mouth, you can see that I've just left the mouth as a simple shape. Um, you know, I can draw in some gums if I want to. And then the mouth, uh, the bottom of the lip sticks out a little bit, right? And then I can make his chin bigger. So I can see I've left out a big part of his chin. I've made his chin a little bit too small. Um, actually a lot too small. Uh, so I'm going to adjust and make his chin bigger. So coming down this way. So there's a lot of nuances in the face, um, but you know, if you stick to a easy formula, you can um, make the process a lot easier because you're, you know, remembering, okay, the ball and shield and then adding in all of the, um, the angles, right? Adding in those, uh, those lines. For example, where the corner of the glasses kind of align with the mouth, right? Double checking those, that's really going to help you um, make the drawing a lot more proportionate and a lot more believable. So you can see he's got like a big Adam's apple here, right? Um, I'm not really going to uh, draw it too much. I might just like change or add it in my line art but I don't really you know, want to emphasize it too much. If I was shading it, I might emphasize it more, but this is just a line drawing. We're not gonna go into shading today. Okay, so now what I can do is like smooth out his head, for example, like this, right? Smooth out all of those uh, parts that I simplified, and then I'm gonna give his hair a little bit more volume so I can, you know, Draw in some hair here. Give it a little bit of texture. And so, yeah, there you go. So that's a very simple way of drawing a head at a difficult angle. Uh, if you're trying this with me, let me know if it was easy, uh, if you found it really challenging, if you have a different method, for drawing something like this because you know 
There's lots of different ways to, uh, lots of different approaches to draw faces. I'm actually a portrait artist, so this is the method that I teach um, because personally it uh, has been a lot easier for me to dissect a face this way. Um, there are different uh, types of methods. So there's the Loomis method and there's the Riley method. Um, I prefer the Loomis method. So the Loomis method is more of that ball and shield uh, method with sort of a, a slice um, through that ball. So if this is the ball, you know, there's kind of like a, a slice of the ball where it's a little bit flatter, right? And that's kind of the side of the face, right? So this is based on uh, the Loomis method. I like the Loomis method personally because it's a lot more simple. The Riley method has a lot of different lines and alignments. It's more appropriate for realistic drawing, whereas the Loomis method can be used for uh, cart cartooning as well because it, it's just like a lot more simple. Okay. Let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. If not, we're going to move on to the second face. Um, I might give it a little, just a little bit of shading. Let's give it a little bit. So if you do decide to um, shade your artwork, you know, I would just kind of focus on like very minimal shading. So I might give the ear, you know, a little bit of color, uh, the bottom of the chin, the neck, you know, maybe the Adam's apple and then the hair. Just two values, just really, really simple. Um, and then also like the bottom of the eyelid, right, is usually a little bit darker. Um, and giving him some sideburns here. There we go. Very, very simple. All right, so one of the things I forgot here was the laugh line. So I'm just adding that in to give him a little bit more personality. Uh, Indy says, what about the Loomis method for more dynamic angles? Well, this may not look like a dynamic angle, but it's actually really hard to draw because it has all three things. It has a little bit of a tilt. It has um, a, a POV uh, that is not straight on, right? And it also has a, like, you're, you're looking up at him. So I do have a few other examples. Um, this was the first one. So let's move on to... Uh, Let's see here. Let's move on to a different one. So this one. This one is a lot more challenging because uh, our POV is slightly below her. I would say our POV is like around her shoulder. Um, maybe like between her shoulder, maybe like somewhere around here would be the POV. So... Let's go back to the tracing and let's see what we can um, analyze in the tracing. So if I had to trace this head, right, I would kind of find, I would try to find the ball. here like that um, it looks a little bit short though because remember that the ball um, would 
go all the way behind the ears. So with this head, it's a little bit more tricky. Um, the ball is actually bigger than it seems. So it's it's kind of like kind of like this. And it goes behind the ear. And then the center line goes down this way. Oh, I need to make my brush bigger. Center line comes down. So to find the center line, um, you would you can draw like a connect the dots, right? So from there, in between the bridge of the nose, or in between the eyebrows to underneath the nose, you don't want to you don't you don't want to use the tip of the nose as a landmark because noses come um, out of that circle, right? It it protrudes and it depends on somebody's nose. So you want to use the the bottom of the nose instead of the the tip and then you can get like find the bottom of the lip like the middle of the lip and then the chin and then you can kind of find your line right bring your line all the way down uh, and then you can draw in the shield so when I draw in the shield the first thing I look for is the bottom of the chin can I see the bottom of the chin Right? If you can see the bottom of the chin, then you know that you are looking up at somebody or they have their head tilted back. So I'm trying to clean up my circle here. My circle's a little bit wonky. And because she's leaning back, like her, her head is tilted back, you don't see as much of the volume of the hair, right? That's why that circle is touching the hair because you don't see the volume as much. And then now we'll put in the neck. One thing you might notice about the neck um, is, first of all, necks have a, uh, a, a very clear, um, a very clear gesture. It goes this way, right? It curves this way. It does not go straight. It's very awkward looking when it's straight. So remember the curve in the back of the neck. And then I'm going to trace the ear. Notice how low the ear is. Like it's very, very low on that head. So the lower the ear, um, the higher the head is tilted. So if you tilt your head back, you'll notice that your ears get lower, right? If you tilt your head forward, you'll notice that your ears get higher. So these are things, uh, landmarks that you can look for. Uh, and then once you find the ear, you should be able to find the line of the eyes. <coughs> so you'll notice that in the last example, um, if I look at my last tracing, you'll see that the top of the ear aligned with this person's eyebrows, right? On her, you'll see that the top of the ear uh, actually aligns with her eyes. So it's somewhere in between her eyes and her eyebrows, right? A lot of uh, women and female characters have eyebrows that are really far, like further away from their eyes, right? So for example, a lot of uh, male characters, um, you know, their eyes might be like very, very close to their eyebrows. Um, whereas female characters, you know, their eyebrows might be a lot further away from their eye. Um, and this is just, this is kind of stereotypical, um, but it's uh, something that I do notice a lot when I'm drawing faces. So here I'm tracing the shape of the nose, of the mouth, and of the bottom of the chin. And you can see that the shapes echo each other, right? It's the same kind of triangle shape. 
If you really wanted to extend that triangle shape to draw in her eyelids, right? Like if her eyes were open, they would also follow this shape. So her rib cage would come down like this and her arms would attach like that. All right, so there's my tracing. So let's turn off the reference picture and you can kind of see uh, what we're left with here. So the Loomis method would just mean that uh, the edge of the circle or the, um, the flat part of the circle is about there. It, it kind of intersects with the corner of the eyebrow. So if you're trying to find in uh, the, the slice of that uh, ball, just look for the corner of the eyebrow and it's usually there. But again, it's, it's a little bit different for everybody, right? Okay, so let's turn the reference back on. It also kind of aligns with the cheekbone. So you can see her cheekbone is there, right? Um, and so once you sort of find that, you can also uh, see that in between um, these two landmarks, in between the corner of the eyebrow and the cheekbone, on the other side is where there's a little bit of a dip right? So that dip is the eye socket and the cheekbone, and that dip is actually pretty important, but I don't actually draw it in the beginning because it's too complicated. I just start with the ball and shield, and then I'll draw the dip. So Indy says, I always have difficulty with the placement of the ears in both the ball and shield method and the Loomis method. I know the length of the ear is the corner of the eye and the bottom of the ear is the cor is I know is the bottom of the nose but the width is not proportional and it's even trickier for me when the head is in different or extreme angles. So um I feel your pain there. <laughs> um I definitely think that uh it's something that you just have to do and experiment with. Um, let me know if you've ever traced something to analyze it. So if you have, um, that might help you in the future, sort of figure out the placement of the ear. It's the ear is kind of like the third thing that I draw after I draw the ball and shield, I'll draw the ear. And then that helps me find everything else on the face. Um, so the ear is really a, uh, a key landmark because it helps you draw everything else. Oh, hey there, Vin. Sorry, you need to head out. Um, you're very welcome, and we'll see you next time. Um, okay, so let me just redraw that. Okay. All right, so once we've kind of done the tracing, now let's try and freehand it. Uh, because we've drawn it once, it's easier to draw it again, right? So let's move on to the freehand drawing and see how we get along. Okay, so we're gonna start by drawing in that ball. Again, it doesn't have to be super accurate, okay? You can fix it later. Just draw a ball. Um, this one's a little wonky, but I'm going to go with it. Because um, the point is not really to, uh, you know, keep erasing, keep erasing. It's really just to draw in as much context as you can uh, manage. And then once you have that context in, uh, you can adjust. So you can turn on your tracing if you need to um, take a look at how far the ball is compared to where the bottom of the shield is, right? You can always refer to it. So 
it's actually pretty high up there right because you can see the the bottom of the shield so i'm going to draw in this shape and then start to draw in the neck this one is actually really hard because she's got a tilt going backwards, a tilt going uh, to the right, and you've got a tricky POV, right? Really, really tricky. So there's probably going to be a lot of adjustments. <laughs> um, okay. So if it helps you, you can draw in the shape of the shadows as well. So we'll draw in this shape here. Right? Sometimes drawing in uh, shapes uh, really helps me because, you know, I can draw a shape, but if you ask me, can you draw the bottom of her chin? That's different, right? <laughs> like, so if you think about just um, like, how can you simplify this in your own brain? Um, how can you simplify, you know, what it is you're drawing in your own brain? Um, it makes things a lot easier. You can also turn on your tracing, turn off your reference to reference um, your freehand drawing if things are getting too complicated. So for example, one of the things that I see here is like, look how close the eye and the nose are. Like so close that they're almost touching, right? Um, and then I can kind of see already that I've made the jaw a little bit too wide, right? Obviously, my drawing is also bigger, um, but I've made it too wide or my ball is too short. Like, look at look at the size of this ball here versus the size of my ball, right? So there's always going to be a little bit of a difference from the tracing to the freehand. Um, but the whole point of the tracing is to sort of help you have that first go. Okay. So keeping in mind how close the nose is, let's see here. So my tracing, so my nose is kind of here, right? I draw in the bottom of the nose uh, and then I can draw in the, the dip here. The dip makes it look a little bit more human. Um, and then it also helps me find like the eyebrows, right? So the peak of that curve is where her eyebrows are. And then her, her, uh, her nose kind of comes down like this. And then her eye sits along this line right here. So again, I'm not going to worry or stress too much about the eye. I'm just going to keep it as a very simple shape. Okay, really, really simple shape. Um, I think I made it too big. But also the corner of the nose uh, aligns with the corner of your eye. So the corner of the nose here would align with the corner of the eye. So I'm just going to redraw it a little bit smaller. And then adjust the eyebrow. Because hmm. I made it a little bit too short. So lots of adjusting, uh, lots of sort of figuring out where things go. Lots of simple shapes initially, right? Okay, and then for the mouth, um, some people like to draw mouths uh, like this, like they'll draw in the opening of the mouth uh, and then they'll draw in, you know, the lips 
or the shape of the lips, right? Something like that. That's kind of how I like to draw mouths. Um, but it might be easier in this case, like if you're doing like a weird angle, it might be easier to just draw it as a shape, right? So if I just drew it as a shape, it would kind of look like this. So almost like a hexagon, like a long hexagon shape, right? Like that. Uh, and then I can make some adjustments with her, the side of her face. So it needs to come out a little bit more like that. And then I will clean up my lines. Hello, Louise Reborn. Welcome in. We got two poses down. We're going to try to do four today and hopefully get faster as we go. Um, so again, the circle for this head is a little bit small, um, but that's okay. It, it's still like looking um, pretty decent. Um, for what it is so again don't don't stress out so much like the ball and shield doesn't need to be perfect it's just really a starting point and then once you have better context then you'll be able to um, freehand it a lot more easily so I'm just gonna draw in her hair So my favorite medium to work with is chalk, um, like chalk pastel. I find it just like really, really fast. Um, but I am using my uh, XP pen today. I have a XP pen uh, Artist 15.6 Pro. And so it acts as my second monitor. And it's great. It's really, really handy um, for both work <laughs> and art. So I definitely recommend it. Okay. So there's a very uh, basic sketch of a head. Um, you, you saw my process, you know, it was just mostly assembling shapes and things like that. Um, the next thing I will do is just make a few shadows. So when I shade, um, I will just sort of use one value because again, I want to simplify things as best as I can. Um, so here, you know, I'm just kind of putting in the shadows of her hair, even though her hair has highlights on them as well. I'm just kind of keeping them all one value. Also going to put in some simple shading for her face. So here we go. Just some very, very light shadows to indicate where the light is hitting. All right. So there's a second drawing. Um, hopefully it turned out okay for you guys. 
Um, I'm going to erase some lines of the nose here. Just to kind of simplify further. All right. Okay, so the next one that we'll try together uh, is <laughs> a very, very distorted head. This one is somebody looking straight down. This probably is really, really hard for most people. Um, and let's start with our tracing again. So this one, <laughs> if you're ever going to draw a head like this, um, it's probably a good idea to reference a skull um, and to also trace it so that or trace the um, the ball and shield so that you can um, redraw it more easily. So you can see that the ball is more of an oval shape. Right. And that's because when you draw, when you look at skulls, right, if you look at a skull, a skull from a bird's eye point of view, right, like imagine that's the skull, um, a skull from a bird's eye point of view is longer than it is wide, right? So it's more of an oval, um, it's, 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 longer and kind of stretched out, whereas a skull from the side is goes the opposite way, right? So if you look at a skull from the side, right, it's kind of like, kind of like this, right, there's the skull. <laughs> so it, it kind of looks like that. Um, so if you keep that in mind, you'll start to notice that the tracings of like, you'll start to notice that your circle or your ball and shield is not always a perfect ball, right? Like sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. So just keep that in mind that the ball can change shapes. And it also depends on the, um, the age and sometimes the ethnicity of the person that you're drawing right like there are some um uh people who have a lot like you know really really you know more bulbous heads and some people have longer heads um it depends on a lot of things so just remember that uh rules are very general you can't really take them too literally um <laughs> that'll get you in trouble <laughs> okay okay so you know the tracing <laughs> was actually not that hard let's turn the reference off and see Mostly what I learn mostly what I learned from tracing the reference is uh, that the ball and shield proportions is really, really distorted. So it's kind of like like if I took this, I would say it's about four and a half um time so this distance plus so one two three four four and a half right so the ratio is like one to four and a half the jaw or the shield proportion to the the ball proportion is really what you're looking for and then you might also notice <coughs> that the line of the shoulders are pretty high up 
right? Like look at how high up the, the shoulder is. So that means the rib cage is um, kind of like doing this. Right? You can see the top of the rib cage. So um, the shoulder line is also really, really important to consider and where it sort of meets that ball. Okay. Okay. So let's try to freehand it now. We're going to take a look at our tracing and now we're going to freehand. <laughs> okay. So the ball was somewhat like this. Somewhat like that. And then we're going to draw in the center line. There's the chin. Again, if you get distracted by all these curves, right, you're like, no, but wait, I want to put in the chin and then there's the nose and then there's the mouth and like all this, all this, all this stuff. Like, don't worry about that stuff. That can be put on after you draw in the ball and shield. If you put that in too early, it's just going to confuse you. So leave it out. Um, focus on the, the very, very, you know, like basic, simple um, structure, right? Like think about it. If you were a sculptor, you're not going to like start sculpting the details first. You, you're going to, you're going to have to carve out the structure or, you know, set aside a, a lump of clay that is, um, you know, similar to your, your big basic shape first before you move on to the details. So you want to draw like a sculptor. Okay, so you'll notice that the neck is underneath, right? Pretty simple, actually. Um, pretty easy so far. Then we'll draw in the, um, the eyebrows, right? So the eyebrows are kind of like here. And then the eyes pretty close to the eyebrows. Pretty, pretty close, I would say. Um, and then the nose kind of touches this line here. Mm. very close to the eye, like very, very close. And then the mouth. And you'll see that the lip is overlapping the chin. <laughs> you don't see that very often, except in this uh, very, very distorted pose here. Okay, so then you can always uh, compare your drawing to your tracing afterwards and just kind of see how close you got it, right? So let's see, let's turn off the reference and turn on the tracing. It's a little bit messy because of my skulls, but it's, you know, pretty, pretty close, I would say. Okay, so now I'm going to add some shadows and then uh, clean up my lines. So this one, surprisingly, was the easiest one to draw, even though it seemed like it was the hardest. So let's give, let's give their head a little bit of shading here. So as a portrait artist, um, obviously I've had to practice a lot. I've had the luxury of people 
um, you know, commissioning me for family portraits. Uh, and some of the challenges are, you know, not just painting one person, but having multiple people, right? And having them all sort of interact and work together, like that is usually the most challenging. Um, but, you know, once you uh, practice and practice some more, it, it does get easier. Um, and doing studies like this is always um, really helpful because it allows you to, um, you know, really analyze what you need to do um, in terms of the, the um, angles and, you know, drawing in the structure of the face and all of that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, what else do I want to do? I'm going to erase the center line here. Or at least lighten it up a little bit. There we go. So that wasn't actually that hard. <laughs> Let me know how you guys uh, got on if you were practicing with me. All right. Uh, okay, so let me just check the time here. It is 10.34. Uh, I will do one more um, because I had planned to do four studies. So if you guys have any questions, um, we do have some time for Q&A. Uh, so feel free to throw them in the chat. And I will try to be a little bit more speedy with this one. But again, you know, the first one took the longest. Uh, this one uh, hopefully won't take as long. Uh, any tips for eyelashes? I struggle with matching the curvature of the reference. That's a really good question. Uh, she's got eyelashes here, so we can talk about eyelashes um, in this one. And Indy said, I struggled with the likeness of the reference, even though proportionally I think I did good. That's okay. The likeness is secondary. We are focusing on head angles. And if this is something that you um, find yourself struggling with, like if you struggle with a bunch of things, right? You're like, okay, I struggle with head angles. I struggle with eyes. I struggle with this and that and the other. It's always easier to just focus on one thing, right? Cause if you're focusing on like, oh, I got to get this right. And I got to get that right. It becomes really overwhelming. Um, you know what I mean? So you want to just, just focus on, okay, this time I'm just going to focus on the head angle. Okay. Nothing else. The likeness doesn't matter. Um, just, just focus on the head angle. If you can get the head angle, uh, to your, you know, satisfactory or you're, you're kind of content with it. Um, then you can say, all right, now I will work on the likeness. Um, and then tackle one thing at a time, right? All right. So this one I actually didn't trace. Um, I just kind of started with the freehand. But uh, you can definitely trace if you need to. Um, this one's a lot sort of simpler than the others. Um, so I feel like I could probably just freehand it. Um, I don't really trace faces much anymore. I just trace them uh, for classes to kind of show my students um, 
how they can dissect a face. So you can kind of see her ears um, align, don't align with her eyebrows or her eyes. It kind of is in between. It's like exactly in between. And you can also see like she's got a longer head. Like she doesn't have like a wide head. She has a longer head. The first guy we drew had a very wide head. Okay, so... Let's draw in her. Oops, I'll start with her nose. So her nose, kind of this shape, right? You can see that triangular shape. So ears, then nose, uh, and then the nose will lead into the eyebrow, especially with this three quarter view, like it, it, need, it leads really, really nicely into that eyebrow. And then you can kind of start to find the dent, right? This dent that goes into the eye. And then her eye right now, just draw it as a triangle shape. Okay, don't complicate it. Don't try to draw in all the details. Remember, context is your friend. <laughs> the more context you give yourself, the easier the, uh, the drawing will become. But if you jump into details too quickly, that, that will spoil it, <laughs> right? The details are like really fun to draw, so we always wanna draw that first, uh, but it's not always the best um, method or the best approach because we get lost in the details and then we sort of lose sight of the bigger picture. So I'm just going to focus on the shape of her eye and not so much the rest. Okay, so once I have the shape of her eye, then I'm going to move on to her mouth and then I'll come back to the eye. So um, this mouth is very complicated. Like her lips have a different shape. Um, you know, like it, it's, it's, it's very uh, complex. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just draw in the shape, like the overall shape of the mouth. Okay, so that I can simplify it for myself, give myself the context that I need, and then come back to it. I see a lot of uh, beginners um, and my students as well. They'll, they'll sort of complicate it for themselves, right? They, they try to do too many things all at once. And then what ends up happening is they get very frustrated because uh, they're not doing one thing at a time. They're kind of trying to do seven things at a time, right? You can see like how simple um, I've sort of left it. I, don't, I didn't really draw a lot of details yet. Um, once I have in the, uh, you know, the shape of the eye, then I can go in and put in everything else. just keeping it very rough and very loose. Uh, so tips for eyelashes. So I have some tips for you. Um, when you think about eyelashes, uh, you want to think about them on a curve, right? So for example, um, if your eye, here's a bird's eye view of an eye, okay? You're looking down at somebody's eye. So if this is, the inside of their eye, right? Um, the lashes are a little bit shorter, right? And then as it gets to the outside of the eye, it starts to get a little bit longer, right? And it starts to build like this. Think about a strip of like false lashes, <laughs> right? Um, 
my, my brush is not really doing this justice. But if I wanted to really, really uh, simplify it, your lashes grow along a curve, right? So it's kind of like this. It's longer at the end, shorter at the inside of the eye, and then it, it grows along that curve, right? So that means when you're drawing an eye that's like three quarter view, right? And the curve is going this way, right? In her eye, um, then you would, you would start to follow that curve. And you can see that as it gets to the end, they all kind of start to bunch up right? They, they all sort of like overlap each other. So it, it's no longer lashes, but it's more like a thick line. So in other words, a thick line for eyelashes, it works better than individual lashes. Like I just drew one line for this lash and, and it looks way better than me trying to draw like individual lashes <laughs> with like a very thick brush. Um, Less is more. <laughs> um, all right. This angle is, uh, it, it's still tricky because you're looking down at her, right? But you can still see the bottom of her nose. Um, a lot of people also struggle with drawing nostrils. Like, how do you draw nostrils? Um, so if you think about a nose as if it's a, a wedge shape, like let's just, let's just pretend the nose is kind of like this shape, right? So there's, there's the nose from the side. If you imagine a ball at the end of the nose, everybody has a ball at the end of the nose. Um, and then there's like a ball here and then there's a ball on the other side. The nostril will sit in between these two balls, right? It sits in between. So if you had to imagine it on her, right, it might be here. There's the little one and then the nostril would sit right in between that. All right, so her face the way it's lit it's it's like really really um washed out like it's not um there's not very dramatic lighting on her so i'm just going to give it a very very minimal shading uh, she is wearing some eyeshadow so i can highlight that and then just highlight the bottom of her nose. And I probably should refine her nose a little bit, but I'm going to leave the circles here just to kind of show you the, the general uh, structure of how I, I, I try to simplify noses. Um, but, you know, you can always go in and refine that curve. So, for example, uh, you can see the, the peak of her nose there. So you can kind of see, like, it goes from straight to a little bit of a ball, right? That is where that ball, uh, where, where you can see that ball on her nose. It goes right there, right? There's the other ball and then the nostril sits in between, right? So all of these little uh, subtle shapes count towards your final drawing. It, they, they give you little clues. Um, and then they really help you improve uh, your line work, your structure, your anatomy, all of those, those good things. <laughs> so.
I can start to uh, erase some of these lines. But I'm, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep a little bit of that structure just so you can see it. And we're going to go ahead and finish shading her head. If you're wondering how to draw hair, uh, or if you're looking for some more tutorials, uh, you can check out Wing Canvas's YouTube channel. Uh, I actually just released a, I, I just did a um, tutorial on how to draw hair in pencil. And so if you do struggle with drawing hair, you can check that out. Uh, it's free and hopefully it provides you some tips and tricks because I have a very specific method for drawing hair as well. Um, so if you found this helpful, you can check out our other tutorials. We also stream. Our channel streams uh, every Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So if you go to youtube.com slash at winged canvas, uh, you will find our channel. So I stream on Saturdays, uh, every other Saturday. Uh, Jesse also streams on Saturday. Uh, Jesse specializes in cartooning and comics and digital illustration. She also does character design. Um, I do more of the traditional tutorials and the drawing and painting stuff on the channel. Uh, Josh and Iggy stream on Sundays. So Josh is an animator and uh, he does illustration and character design. And Iggy does uh, cartooning and anime and digital painting. So. <laughs> um, oh, I'm glad some of you guys got to see the hair tutorial. Uh, here is my internal enemy, but after your tips, it became so easy. Oh, you're very, very welcome. I'm very glad that it was helpful. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something today. <laughs> um, and it wasn't too hard. Uh, and hopefully you feel a little bit more empowered to draw heads at difficult angles. Remember the, uh, the tips that I shared with you. One of them, the, the first thing is find that ball and shield uh make it simple for yourself don't complicate it don't try to draw all the details just keep the main structure in mind and yeah i think that is it for now um i hope you guys got some value out of it oh i do have one more resource one more resource to share um so if you are interested in taking classes um, let me just pull up our website here so I specialize in figure drawing and you can find our uh, programs we have summer programs coming up and so let me just put this website up here so you guys can see if you go to wingcanvas.com uh, and you go under youth camps, we have summer intensives. So summer intensives are advanced camps uh, with daily online lessons for teens and adults. Um, you can take it asynchronously or you can take it live. And I am teaching figure drawing and it starts July 8th. So if you're interested in figure drawing, uh, you can check that out. There is a live program as well as a hybrid program. Um, and you can join in August or July. It's every day for four hours. It's like a figure drawing boot camp. Uh, and we have one entire day on drawing heads, uh, hands, and feet. Uh, and then figure drawing two, which is a higher level one. You get to practice your anatomy, your foreshortening. Uh, and day four is the difficult head angles. So that was the, uh, the first drawing that I opened up with. We do the, um, we do this, this, this really, really intensive, uh, head angle drawing step by step. Um, and 
uh, if you are interested specifically in figure drawing and kind of learn at your own pace, uh, you can check out our pre-recorded courses. So I have a course called the Ultimate Figure Drawing Course, and it's a one-time purchase, and there are 11 modules, including the GSL method, uh, which is a method that I coined over 20 years of teaching figure drawing. That's me. <laughs> um, and you can check that out as well. So it's at courses.wingcanvas.com. All right. Well, again, thank you so much, XP Pen, for uh, hosting this workshop. Hope you guys had fun. And I will see you next time. We have another figure drawing uh, workshop coming up in, actually, we have two coming up in July. They're both on Wednesday nights at 9.30 Eastern Time. All right. Uh, the video will be up for you as well. Uh, so stay tuned and keep an eye on the XP Pen server. All right, guys, have a good night. Bye-bye.